Hi everyone, Dr. Nemechek here. Want to talk about something I refer to as cumulative brain injury, which now in the literature is being called mild repetitive traumatic brain injury. Um, and basically it's the concept of these small injuries that we think are inconsequential actually are uh, over time adding onto each other to result in the effect of like one major whopper injury. And now let's just talk about how neurologically you can damage neurons. Uh, first there's the classic physical injury. So you get hit in the head. Um, now concussion is you damage neurons. There's no bleeding in the brain. So like your MRI scan will be normal or your CT scan will be normal. And you have these persistent symptoms for uh, a few to several days. All right. So that could be being knocked unconscious. Well, those come down to then even physically what we call subconcussive injuries, meaning you damage neurons, you don't bleed in the brain, but you don't have any lasting symptoms. And that is an injury as mild as, say, hitting a soccer ball in a soccer match. All right. Uh, that's why they don't allow high schoolers or young kids in playing soccer league to hit the soccer ball because we now know it damages your brain. Um, so those are physical injuries. Then you have emotional trauma. We know emotional trauma uh, will cause damage to neurons in your brain that you can see in a microscope. So they could be a severe event, such as Takasubu uh, syndrome, where otherwise known as dying of a broken heart. Grandma dies, grandpa dies in a couple days, all right? Or they could be what the equivalent of like what I call emotional soccer balls. Um, your dog runs away for an hour. You get your dog back, everything's fine. You just rattled, okay? You just got a little injury. And then emotions, I mean emotions, we covered that, then inflammation. So this is well known for big, big fractures like uh, in the humerus, the femur, the pelvis, uh, the release of inflammatory chemicals from those injuries will basically hit you in the brain and give you an injury you can see in a microscope. Same thing as just the physical stress of a scalpel uh, cutting you in uncomplicated, say, abdominal or thoracic surgery, brain injury, all right? Now we know even the stimulation of a vaccine, brain injury, you can see in the microscope. Um, there is the potential of chemical injuries in autism when you have bacterial overgrowth and the production of propionic acid. There's some data showing in animal models that, that propionic acid may also cause uh, a brain injury. And then there's a phenomenon that um, I believe happens during pregnancy in, in some cases where it's usually around the second or third pregnancy in a woman they'll suddenly develop the sustained autonomic dysfunction that looks like they've been in a serious car wreck and uh, we can help them recover out of it. But I, I can't, I don't know exactly how to categorize that one, whether that's a metabolic thing or a physical thing, I just don't know, but it's not unusual. It's not, we see uh, a number of what we call broken mommies every year here for that kind of injury. So you have a whole bunch of different injuries, right? now. I take these little bops in the head, okay? You're like your dog runs away. People don't remember to tell their doctor about that because they think it's important, all right? And it used to not be important because we know back like in the 1960s that pretty much everybody would fully recover from all of these things, okay? It's only, so, and that's how we were taught by our parents and our grandparents. Their life experience was, those things are fine, don't worry, you'll be okay, okay? And now we know that this chronic inflammatory stress that I'm constantly talking about is preventing us from fully recovering even from these small things. So let's say you get a concussion, you, know, you get an injury, you don't bleed, but you have these persistent symptoms and you get over it. You feel like you're better. Well, what happens is you don't fully recover. You're leaving a little bit of damage behind, but you just don't realize it because your symptoms 
got worse, and now your symptoms got better. But you didn't go back to your baseline before, all right? You're leaving a little bit of damage behind when you, say you just smacked your head a good one on the hatch of the car. And then, uh, you know, something happens at work and you have a conflict with a, one of your coworkers you think might get fired. It ends up being nothing, but you were pretty worried for a day or two. And then uh, you get your flu vaccine and then so forth and so on. These little things that pop, 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 pop. And the residual damage just builds, builds, builds. That's why I call it cumulative brain injury. And then pretty soon your injury is equal to that of somebody who maybe was like thrown from a car in a car wreck, okay? Or got, you know, knocked unconscious and didn't recover. And yet you don't have some dramatic thing like that. And it's very, very common in the patients here my adult patients will come to me, look, they've got this and that, they have their understanding, they've got autonomic dysfunction and like brain injury, but they're like, where's the brain injury? Because they'll give me this history of like 20, 30 years of it just worse and worse and worse and worse autonomic dysfunction. And that could be, you know, the low blood pressure stuff, they're lightheaded, they got headaches, they're anxious, you know, they've got gut stuff, they got whatever they can't sweat or they sweat too much bladder's not working they got all these autonomic dysfunction uh, symptoms and they don't know where it came from and it's this cumulative effect just boom 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 okay so cumulative brain injury uh, known in the literature lately as a repetitive mild traumatic brain injury is a big deal this is there's some recent work that's very interesting that this is gonna prove to be uh, Alzheimer's, okay? And Parkinson's and all this stuff. And so um, just something for you to think about and, uh, and be aware of as things roll forward. Keep working on that inflammation, everybody. Fish oil, olive oil, balance your gut, vagal stimulation. Take care now.